Good morning. We're reading this scripture and um, a couple comments about Psalms 143. There's a little bit of Jewish symbolism in there. It won't make any sense until I kind of explain it in a few minutes. So it reads like this. How good and pleasant is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured, poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as dew of Hermon were fallen on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. That psalm and Psalm 23 speaks of the value of unity, unity among Christians. And when you, and it says when we reunite, unite as Christians, we receive God's blessings. John 17 speaks about Jesus, about Jesus' prayer to his Father. He prayed for his disciples and all believers. It comes to my mind, can we achieve that unity that Jesus had with his own Father? Can we become one and unite under a common bond? Now let's be honest, we don't always agree. I mean, it's just human nature to disagree and have a little bit of conflict here and there and get angry and have disappointment. That's perfectly normal and natural. But our, but our world has become polarized, such divided. And I ask myself, how did we allow this to happen? I don't have the answer. Can we move towards living in harmony can we move towards living together and tackling all the problems we face in a city, state, national, and world? The answer is use the answer is through unifying, we use God's blessings. And He has taught us all over this Bible how to live a godly life. And I turn to the book of James, which is really a good how-to book to live your life. And I encourage you to read it. The, uh, you know, human nature is, we all want to unite, unite. We all want to be together in a group. But just as long as you agree with me and see that I'm right. And that's unfortunately a pretty common narrative now. I'll, I want you to be my friend, but I need you to believe what I believe. And, but you know, Something special happens in a community when, when everybody shares a common purpose, finds a reason to care. And that community I'm referring to could be this church community, could be your family, could be your work family, your friends. Something great occurs when people find value and worth in each other. I think God, Jesus, through Scripture, has charged us to seek a common ground, to seek value in one another, to respect one another. I think we're charged officially in Scripture to do just that. Accepting others for their strengths, for their weaknesses, for their own beliefs, for their social, for their social status, the choices they make. To do that is a great human challenge. However, this, this has never been needed more than right now to accept others in the history of this planet. Psalms, the Psalm I read, 133, 133 and 23, talks about anointment and uses this, this Jewish symbolism of pouring ointment over the head and the clothes and the robes of the person. And back then, the world was very, very, very expensive. So why waste it? But it wasn't wasted. In, in this, these two psalms, it doesn't matter if you value that person. You're giving that person something with, that cost, but didn't matter because you valued that person. So the moral of the story here is the more we value somebody, the less we value things. 
The more we value our, our relationships and people, the less we worry or uh, value issues, lives, conflicts, things in our life. So the take home point is, the more we value and engage our relationships, such as here in our community, church community, family, friends, the less we're gonna care about other things that are really irrelevant. Could be worry, could be conflict, could be, you know, you sit back and uh, it doesn't matter sometimes. Jesus taught us to value others before ourselves. A common theme in this book here. Jesus taught us to value others than ourselves. Selfishness, self-centeredness are sins that don't belong, do not belong in any relationship, especially church community. So in this polarized world, let us see the good in each other. Let's rethink how we see others, even though if they disagree with us. Let's accept others as they are. And in this church, this Kings Highway Christian Church, which I've been at for 30 some odd years, I find that unification. I find we're united as a church family. It's a pleasant feeling. And I think that's what makes us who we are as a church. Our Sunday schools, you know, lift each other up during illness and sickness. Um, although I think our theme is agree to disagree, I don't see a lot of that, but I think we're happy campers, don't you? So, our root here isn't of unification isn't rooted in politics, money, race, other issues. It's rooted that we believe in Christ and all the blessings that He provides us. We share our common goal to walk in His light, do His will. But it's not about the differences here on earth that we encounter. It's really about our relationship with Christ. So from our relationship with Christ, we strive to live a godly life. And what is a godly life? It's one of understanding of others, showing passion, forgiveness, kindness of us for and of each other. For we live on this planet together, why not we strive for a godly existence? So I ask you today to leave today and live your faith. And take, take a different look at some people in your lives and value them and learn to value them and learn to accept them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it is no, it's not new to us that we live in a divided world and we're in some turbulent times and they will pass. But understanding that we're here to live by your way, to walk in your light, eases that pain, eases our uncertainty that we live within. Brings back to this church family where we all support one another and we're unified under one common goal, and that is to do your will and accept you as our Jesus Christ, our Savior. And be with all those on the, on the prayer list, be with all those in this room right now that have private intentions that may need special grace from you. So in your holy name we pray, amen.